Well, I got diagnosed back in 2002 with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, I just finished my senior year of high school. Um, when I was in seventh grade, I was diagnosed with acute lymphocytic leukemia. Uh, up until that point, all I knew about cancer was that it meant I was gonna die. I dated a guy named Kyle. He, um, he got diagnosed with osteosarcoma, um, cancer in his knee when he was 13. Um, ended up losing his leg to cancer and then went into remission for about two years. Um, and after that it came back in his lungs. I started working at Dornbaker Children's Hospital seven years ago and um, working as a nurse in childhood cancer and uh, wasn't expecting this to be a community that I was going to work with. Um, didn't know really anything about it. Um, didn't really have any experience with it and uh, was immediately amazed by the people that I was working with um, and the people that I was taking care of. I developed a cough and I went to the doctor and they gave me an x-ray. I didn't know what the x-ray meant or anything like that and uh, they sent me to the emergency room and from there I got admitted and just all these scans and kind of tests and midnight that night it was me and my parents and a couple of friends from high school and the doctor came in and just said you know you got cancer um, kind of the last thing honestly that I ever would have expected he spent about the next four years having um, thoracotomies to remove the tumors out of his lungs and he had ten of those um, the, the last one that he had, uh, they went in and found that he had a tumor on his heart and um, he tried chemotherapy before that and his body didn't really recept to it well. Um, so they pretty much said there was nothing they could really do at that point and he ended up living about nine months after that. Uh, people would say to me, how can you work in, you know, with young people have, who have cancer? And I've never asked myself that question. Um, working with this population is so inspiring, so passionate, so amazing. So from there I started my chemotherapy the next week because it was really aggressive and it was growing really quickly. Um, they said it was the size of a grapefruit in the middle of my chest and uh, started chemo that next week. And a lot of, um, a lot of our young adult patients, uh, they end up getting separated from their friends. Their friends are really um, kind of afraid to be around them. And because this is somebody that, that's having this strange experience that they don't know what to do. There'll be that two month window where right after you get diagnosed, your friends will just be there and they'll circle around you and they'll really support you. But then from at the right when it hits around that two month period, everybody just kind of disappears and they just don't know how to handle it and they don't know, you know what to do or how to deal with you know, this problem that came into their lives that is way above the, maybe their maturity level or something that they should have to deal with at that point. One of the things I was, I was lucky enough to have access to at, at the hospital that I uh, was being treated at was a group for young adults um, that wasn't really targeted on therapy, but was about hanging out, sharing your experience, learning a little bit more about what your experience was. Um, what your options were, seeing who else was going through it with you. Toward the end it was really good to have um, just a support group of, of people around us that um, were able to help us out and just give us encouragement and that included the doctors and nurses around us. Um, he did have some friends that were also going through cancer that um, he had met in the hospital and such. Um, it was nice to have them and they could kind of compare stories but um, it would have been nice, I think, to have a little more interaction with the patients around him. The medical side, we do a great job. Um, but the social side, there is a lot of need out there. This program is important because no other organization in Portland meets the needs of such a specific age group, um, which comes with a very specific set of needs. A lot of them won't have health insurance. It's kind of an overlooked group um, of people. People figure, oh, they're they're out on their own now. They can support themselves. Um, when it's all, it's a it's a new and scary part of life, kind of being on your own and um, to get diagnosed at that age is um, and and to not always have people around to support you is is really scary. I think our patients that were um, 
empowered enough to uh, take on the treatment and make it their own had such a fascinating and complex and interesting experience that um, the patients that weren't able to have that um, I really wanted to see if there's a way that we could find a way to provide that for them. Community is really making sure that every piece, you know, whether that's the doctors or the nurses or the family or the peers or the patient or survivors all know really what's expected of them to help this one person get through this terribly destructive disease. I think it's being there one-on-one -on -one with that person and hearing out their story and, um, and relating your own experiences to it um, and just being able to, to walk with them through it. Empowerment is giving them control over their own lives because they are having people tell them what they have to do, where they have to go, where they have to be. And this is a really important point in their life where they need to take control. Um, it's time for them to uh, get an education, start their career, uh, form relationships, and giving them that sense of ownership over their own life is what's gonna help them while they're going through treatment it's going to help them with their treatment, and then it's going to help them with what's sometimes even the scarier part, which is when treatment's over, and they no longer have that kind of structure, and they need to figure out what their life is about and what they want to do. The difference between being afraid and being challenged is how much you know about what's happening to you. And that's why education is so important for this population. Because the more that they know, the more that their, that their experience becomes about overcoming a challenge than facing a fear. Thank you so much for coming and listening to our stories. Thank you so much for being here today and um, just supporting our dreams even though they're still in the making. It's now is your opportunity to help this organization get started. And just helping us embark on this new, interesting, and very difficult, yet necessary journey. We have an opportunity to really change a lot of lives and really affect a lot of young adults in the city. You're giving young adults a life during and after cancer. Please think about what we've said and think about the needs that are right here in our community and the many ways that you might be able to give or be involved in this important mission that we bring to you. And just think about how you can be a part of this too.